Hey, this is Danny, and uh, this is going to be part four of the small little <laughs> tiny series that I'm doing on uh, casting a mirror blank. And uh, right now, the uh, temperature has made it to the fusing point. It should be fully fused right now. Um, I brought it up to the fusing temperature and then let it soak there for just a little bit so that that glass could flow just enough to really um, flow together and then it uh, was actually a little above uh, a fusing temperature so that I know that uh, I'll get a nice um, a perfect a perfect um, fuse uh, between the two discs so right now they should be one disc and it's uh, um, I've got the power shut off to the oven because right now I need to um, drop the temperature from the fusing temperature down to a thousand degrees which is going to be my annealing temperature and it'll soak there for several 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 hours and then slowly drop in temperature a few degrees at a time over several days over the next few days until it becomes uh, ambient enough to handle so i have not opened the lid to the oven um, since um, i fired it up earlier today so um, and what we're going to do is we're going to open and close that lid a whole bunch of times to help drop the temperature really fast from uh, it's 1400 degrees right now it was um, uh, 1400 or 1500 uh, about 1530 earlier and I shut the power off and it's dropped that much in about 10 minutes but we want to get uh, get it down to a thousand degrees as fast as possible and uh, a couple of reasons for that the first reason is to uh, devitrification uh, where the glass can actually uh, crystallize a little bit um, in the 1300 range zone somewhere in there and that kind of ruins ruins everything if you get that and I've been fortunate not to not ever have had that um, also um, when you cool it really fast like that down to the kneeling temperature uh, the surface of the glass will uh, um, solidify over so we'll have a layer of solidified glass on there when we start the annealing point It'll still be pliable, you know, the rest of the blank under that. And also it just shortens down the running time. So I'm just going to open the lid a couple of times. Uh, the heat blast is intense, super intense. I use a, a big, heavy, thick insulated glove. I've made a sleeve uh, to go up over my arm to help protect me from the heat. And I use a big, long steel pole to open the lid so I can stand kind of away from it. And the camera, I'm afraid, is a little bit close. We'll see what happens when I when I open that. But uh, I have used a two by four, a two by four piece of wood before to open it up and it instantly, just instantly caught fire. So I use a, a long steel rod with a hook on the end of it. And I'll open it up and hopefully the camera's in a position enough that uh, you can get a look inside there. You'll be seeing it. Um, on the video is the same time I'm seeing it for the first time since I started it. Um, we won't be able to really tell much. Um, the mold is made of stainless steel. It's got the ceramic fiber fault in there. There's no issues or chances of the of the glass spilling out or anything like that. I have had that happen before with other materials I made a mold from. So um, there shouldn't be anything there. I think one thing I'm going to look at closely will be like uh, for bubbles and weird stuff that might look funny with it which is also going to be hard to tell because everything's going to be so bright and red and orange and white and stuff but it'll look pretty cool for you so I'm going to open that up and just see what it looks like and there's a look at the blank right there beautiful beautiful on the camera that blank is a bright yellow but it's actually a kind of a light orange and i'm watching the temperature gauge right now as i've got this open it just looks beautiful i don't see any bubbles or anything weird like that so the heat's the heat's pretty hot so Gonna close her for a minute. And when I close that lid up, the temperature instantly starts to climb back up. So I'll wait just a couple of minutes for 
the heat around me to dissipate and uh, I'll do it again and again and again it'll probably take me 30 or 45 minutes to get it down to the annealing temperature and then once that happens I'll close the lid up and I will not open the lid again not to even to peak or anything until everything is done ambient temperatures and everything so really at the end it's kind of a hope it makes it and <clears throat> kind of a nice little surprise when you get to open the lid for the first time when it's cool enough so but like like I said for many 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 runs now I've had all 100% success I've got things tweaked pretty good to, to my process but I'll open it one more time for you take another peek And there it is again. Everything looks really, really nice in there. Going along just the way I expected it to. I've noticed I have a little trouble with the hinge on the lid catching on one side and kind of makes it a pain in the butt to get it shut. So next run I'll have to make sure that I take care of that. Anyway, that's what that looks like, and I'll just keep opening and closing that lid until it gets down to uh, the annealing temperature, and then it'll sit there and anneal for several hours, uh, and hours and hours, you know, through the night or whatever, and then it'll slowly drop the temperature a couple of degrees at a time until it becomes ambient, and that'll be in a few days. So, um, I'll probably do a few pictures between now and then or something I'll document something over those few days to do the process and then I'll do a video or two um, when I go to get it out of the oven but thanks for watching